Welcome to Aussie Indian and as you know we are bringing you the highlights of Sydney Film Festival. One of the guests who has arrived from India, the very talented Nandita Das, uh, a woman of multi skills and uh, Nandita is uh, talking to us. Uh, let me welcome Nandita mm. to our program. Thank you very much. Nandita, uh, is, is this your first time or I'm sure you have been to Sydney I've before? I've been to Sydney about 14 years ago, which <laughs> I <laughs> are long back and I've been to New Zealand a few times, but not really. So ah, okay. this almost is like a first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have put on a beautiful autumn weather for you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I, when I saw the weather report, it said it was much colder, but the day I arrived, I think I brought some sunshine. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you uh, Well. Uh, you have millions of fans around the world and uh, they have all read your background but let's hear from you how this passion how this journey started for, for you actually i never wanted to do anything with films i didn't even grow up in a family that watched enough films right. my father is a painter my mother a writer and uh, somehow film wasn't a form of entertainment in our house it was always mm -hmm. a music concert a dance recital an exhibition some plays so it's really, uh, you know, like they say, something that has to happen just happens. I did my bachelor's in geography yes. because I had a wonderful teacher, no other reason. I liked the subject. After three years, I didn't like it anymore. I took a year off. I taught at a school called Rishi Valley in the yes, South, J. Krishnamurti right. Foundation. Yes. Wonderful school. Yes. Decided that if I had to do a master's, I would do it in social work okay. because I enjoyed interacting with people and there were issues that I cared for. I did a bit of street theater with mm -hmm. a person called Savdar Hashmi who yes. was very brutally murdered mm -hmm. after ah, yeah, that. Yes. Right. yes, in fact when I was in Rishi Valley that's when he was murdered and oh, okay. uh, during my graduation I did street theater. So in fact that propelled me to want to in fact do something you know, more sort of community work and I did my masters in social work and uh, by accident I met Deepa Mehta mm -hmm. and I did Fire which was my first yes. film. Yes. And that's 22 years ago, yes. in 1996. That's right. That's right. And uh, since then, I've done 40 films in 10 different languages, yes. including Kannada, as yeah, we just talked before right. this interview. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, and then I did a f I directed a film called Firak, which was in 2010, mm -hmm. which again was by accident. It was more like the stories have just come to me and kind of compelled me to direct. Really, yes. So I see my film work more as an interest than a career or a profession. Yes. You know, more as a means to an end, a means to share and express myself. Mm -hmm. And Manto is my second film, That's right. yeah, yes. which is at the festival. Yes. Well, you have uh, acted in uh, very many different languages, those 40 films you mentioned. Is it uh, the opportunities came or you wanted to diversify yourself? No, I have actually never seeked a project because like I said, it was not something, I didn't see it as a career. So, you okay. know, it frees you from ambition, it frees you mm -hmm. from having to chase something. Yes, yes. Uh, projects started coming, actually a lot of uh, mainstream projects also came in the beginning more so then even later and uh, somehow it just didn't interest me enough and I felt that in other languages not just Hindi but other languages had uh, more conviction there were stories inspired by literature you know they had to compromise less because they were working sort of in a smaller pond yes. as opposed to the Hindi films that even independent Hindi films have to really compete with the bigger films and it's yeah, always very right. difficult in mm -hmm. the marketing and distribution so yeah and then also a lot of eminent filmmakers like i've worked with Mrinal sen in yeah. bengali or adur gopalakrishnan in malayalam or you know i've worked with santosh shivan mani ratnam mani in tamil ratnam, yes. so in different uh, languages shyam i started shyam benegal yeah. or that was hindi govind helani yes. in hindi yes. so i did different and and also many new directors who were also wonderful i mean the kannada film was with kavita lankesh which was oh, her first okay. film that right. she directed and you know so it was also it was a mix yes. it was more about the projects the people yes. the stories they wanted to tell that i felt like i want to be part of ah, okay <laughs> so if i s ask you to name a director of course they're all very uh, special directors and, and they're very different also you know it's almost difficult to compare yes. like the the experience of working with Mrinal Sen was completely different from experience working with Mani Ratnam yes. and both were very interesting and intriguing to work with. Yes. 
Well, D Deepa Mehta obviously brought those two fantastic movies. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's a major milestone in your acting career? Well, definitely Fire was a landmark film. Also, not just because it was my first film and it took me to a different stream of work, but also because of the subject. I mean, homosexuality was something that in India it was yeah, like a yeah. no-no, you know, you just pretend it doesn't even exist. <laughs> yeah. And I come from a very liberal family, we discussed about everything and yet okay. we never really talked about issues of homosexuality. So when I read the script, I was like, well, this is interesting because even in my family, which I thought was very liberal, yes. we never really, somehow this topic just never came up. Yes, yes. You know, so, um, so I think it was just something that made me confront the prejudices of a society that how, mm. in a way, you know, how hypocrite we were. <laughs> that's something that existed from, you know, historical times. It's a human behavior. Yes, it's yes. got nothing to do with anything. And yet we never discussed it openly. Mm. So, yeah. uh, and also it, it brought the conversation in the public space. It, it yeah. you know, made us talk about freedom of expression, that yeah. are we allowed to speak about things that we care for? as long as we are not harming each other, yes, you know, why right. can't people be allowed to live the way they want to live? So, <laughs> yes. this whole thing of the othering, you know, that there is a them and us, yes, that right. uh, topic somehow became more important to my own engagement with these issues yes. after that film. Yeah. It, it created a bit of controversy, didn't it? Because this underlying exactly. social problem, which no one wants to talk about, was brought in the form of a film. Exactly. So, I think Anything that ruffles the feathers creates controversy, yes. right? If there are, if you do the safe space <laughs> films, then there's no controversy. Yes. But the minute you talk about something that makes people uncomfortable, makes people confront either their own demons or their own prejudices, or something that they have happily pretended didn't happen, of course it's going to create. But not all controversy is bad. Sometimes yeah, it, right. you know, it helps us grow as mm -hmm. human beings, as a society. So I think it did more good than bad. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. But you, after having worked with all those directors mm -hmm. who are very famous and brought out some fantastic films in the Indian movie industry, uh, if I ask you which is the director you want to work again and again with, <laughs> what would you say? Well, many of them actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think many of them would, I mean, Manal says that was his last film, you know, and it's unfortunate that we can't even find that film. It was so sad. Yeah, the producer, we don't know where the producer, he he himself hasn't been able to find the print now. So if, if you're watching and you know where this Mr. P.D. Gupta, I remember the producer's name, <laughs> yes. if we can trace him and find his film and show it to more people would be great. I would love to work with Santosh Shivan, with, you know, Mani Ratnam and uh, with Adur Gopala Krishnan and, yes. you know, many, many others who I've worked with uh, again, yeah, yes. they were they were good filmmakers. Rituparno Ghosh passed away, unfortunately. I did a Bengali film with him. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so there are many, many people. And there are other directors that I haven't had the opportunity uh, to work with. And there are new, a lot of young, new directors are coming up yes. with very interesting scripts and sort of thinking a little out of the box. Mm -hmm. I would like to work yes. with them as well. Uh, how do you think the Indian movie industry has changed in the last, uh, from the time you started your career as acting career? For one, I mean, I haven't done any really acting film, acting project in seven, eight years. Yes. This was all pre-social media, media right. you know. So yeah. I think the digital medium and social media has changed a lot in good and bad ways. Good, it has democratized the process. I think many younger, less, like smaller budget films are being made because you don't need the celluloid for it. Yes. And, you know, people are shooting even films on phones and all kinds of small cameras. So there's more experimentation happening. Um, social media has m made also, just like anybody can yeah, voice their opinion, right. you know, so you're not dependent on the traditional reviewers. Um, but like anything, med these, are, these are all neutral mediums. Yes. You can do good with it and you can do bad with of it. Course, course. So you can also be trolled. <laughs> the social media can be used very negatively, yes, unfortunately. Yes. Not just for positive things, of which course. is sad. Right. <laughs> you know, th I also sometimes get trolled because, right? yeah, if I, because I have sometimes strong opinions about <laughs> things. And if you stand for things, then there are always, you also create, yes. you know, enemies quote unquote <laughs> but um, also with digitization despite digitization and multiplexes 
it's not that we are getting that many diverse stories either. Yeah. I mean, if you see the rural pages in media are decreasing, yes. you know, even though we have 24 hour channels and everything. Similarly, the rural stories are diminishing. Yes. So even though India is so diverse, that diversity is not really reflected in films. Yes. It's kind of getting a little homogenized as well, the kind of films that are coming up. You know, I mean, there are a few mainstream films like Lagan and few others yeah. that have come about rural stories, mm. but largely our protagonist is much more urban, yes. much more upper class, yes, you know. Right. So where are those stories? I mean, they are mostly rural stories are in independent films, which often people don't watch. Mm. So even in my 40 films, people struggle to say more than five films, you yes. know, the names of those. Also because regional cinema doesn't get that kind of, of exposure. We are still not used to watching films with English subtitles yes. or dubbed in other languages, which is a pity because mm. India is not just Delhi, Bombay, of you know, course, India is course. all over and yes. sadly we don't get country to see those countries. films. <laughs> exactly, country <laughs> of country, that's a good yeah. phrase to use. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what made you uh, change your career from uh, acting to directing films? Uh, is that a logical move uh, in the career? No, it wasn't. Like I said, it wasn't really a career. It wasn't really uh, transitioning. Like, you know, even now I get acting offers and yeah. if something really interests me, I would do. I think I've become more and more choosy because you realize time is precious oh, and, cool. you know, there's only that much you can do. And I have many other interests. I do a lot of social advocacy work. Yes with a lot of NGOs and, you know, sort of supporting a lot of campaigns and things like that. I do a lot of speaking engagements. Oh. I, I used to do a monthly column for The Week, this oh, okay. magazine, yeah, for eight years I did. Yeah. I stopped writing just before my shooting because it was just too oh, exhausting, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a, you know, eight-year-old child. He's almost going to be eight in August. Oh, so, right. yeah, so in this seven, eight years, I've done many different things. I wrote a play called Between the Lines. Yeah, yeah. And yes. um, I then was at Yale. I did a fellowship at Yale on leadership. Yes. So I'm constantly doing many different things. In fact, Manto is the only project that kind of brought me to focus. Like for six years I've been working on it. Yes. And of course, along with my multitasking. But somehow when you direct a film, mm -hmm. everything else kind of also starts taking a little bit of a back seat yeah. because it just takes the life out of you. Yeah, There's right. a lot you have to do. It's not like acting that you just go to a shoot mm. and do your Is bit. It more creative, you think? Of course, it's very creative. It's more exciting, but it's also more challenging and yeah. more draining sometimes. <laughs> but but it's also very fulfilling at many levels. Yes, you have received so many awards and accolades. Uh, I can't even. Uh, find the number to mention, but uh, uh, France uh, gave you the highest civilian honor and they inducted you to the Hall of Fame in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And the France carried your uh, uh, picture on their stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, if I ask you, what gave you the utmost uh, satisfaction in all these awards that you have received? You know, it would sound like I'm trying to be falsely modest, but <laughs> honestly, awards and I've been on juries yes. and you know, it is Cannes about the, festival, yeah, yeah, the Cannes Film Festival and other festivals as well. Um, this is all, it's, it's a subjective thing. A few people come together, they decide and it's this year me, another year it's going to be somebody else and it's about being at the right time, right place yes. and you know, it's, it's, so you can't take them too seriously. You're happy in the moment. Yes. You know, when you hear the announcement, you're like, oh, it's yeah, nice and people, uh, yeah, but I don't think yeah. I'm the, I'm the, you know, the most deserving woman in the country. I know so many amazing women who have done so much more than I have, yes. you know, you're but sometimes, <laughs> no, but it's true. I'm not being modest. I genuinely know so many people to be the first one. It's because also in the Western world, they don't shed as much light on the Indian yeah, the subcontinent, you know, or yes. the, as we call the developing countries. Yes. So it's also maybe somebody heard of me and, you know, just they proposed the name. I don't know how mm. these things work. Mm. If I was in the jury, I would never give myself the <laughs> award and, I, and yeah. there would be 10 other women that I would. So, you know, to be honest, I don't give too much attention to all of that. Mm -hmm. the, the personal stories, when somebody sees your film and comes and shares how it really impacted them and you know those little stories are those are precious mm, because yes. what does a film do it doesn't really create big revolutions it it triggers conversations it makes you reflect it you know some, it it stirs something in you yes. and that's what you want and 
so you when those stories come those are those are more heartwarming and yeah, you right. feel <laughs> oh well i did my little bit it's yeah, a drop yes, in the ocean and it touched somebody yes so yes. yeah you are being too modest as i said uh, no but that's what <laughs> please don't take it as a sign of any modesty if there's something good i'll tell you that it's a good film do go and watch it i'll be <laughs> modest about it but yeah. uh, but truly yeah, yeah. talking about good films about uh, let's talk about your uh, latest venture manto mm -hmm. uh, how did you pick this uh, this uh, writer uh, from uh, mm -hmm. born in uk and uh, he, no, he wasn't born in no? uk he was born in actually um, near amritsar near amritsar is yeah, it oh, he okay. was uh, it's manto sadat hasan manto that's right yeah. and uh, he was an amazing writer who wrote a lot about women especially those on the okay. margins of society like sex workers okay. and that nobody else was writing yeah. he also wrote a lot about partition oh, not yeah, like yeah. just the epic stories but human stories and he was not religious and you know he was uh, he was really a free spirited person okay. and he was very ahead of his times and i i began reading him when i was in college mm -hmm. but i only knew him as a short story writer yeah, right. so i wanted to do a film on his short stories and it never happened and then in 2012 which was his centenary celebration i started reading his essays because a lot of essays started getting published also in english the translations of that and i read a lot of in interesting articles yes. william dalrymple wrote something and yes. you know suketu mehta who's a writer who wrote salman rushdie said he was one of the greatest short story writers of the subcontinent so i started getting intrigued by the person and not yes. just his stories yes. and i realized he was a lot like my own father uh -huh. and uh, by growing up with a, my father is quite a maverick artist, said, yeah. he's an artist yeah. but a, quite a misfit even in the art world uh, okay. so uh, i realized that there were there were some similarities and i was intrigued by the person and i thought well here is a person that i would want to make a film on mm -hmm. because he also allowed me to respond to the issues of today yes. which is freedom of expression issues of identity yes. and or censorship these are things that i'm also intrigued by and i felt okay like why don't i do a film on his life and when i started reading about his life it was so vast that i started with a 10 year of his life and it kept getting narrower and narrower right. and now it's like 4 years of his life which okay. is before and after partition yes which are also the most sort of interesting and tumultuous years yes. in the lives of india and pakistan so yes yes that's that's the framework and he was really in love with bombay yes and his yeah. bombay stories are most sort of famous yeah. so yeah that's yeah. what it's about yeah we are looking forward to seeing that movie and uh, mm -hmm. uh today the, it's going to be it's premiere, premiere in premiere australia today. premiere yes. at yeah. the sydney I'm film festival okay yeah today it's at 3:40 and tomorrow yeah. at 7:30 some yes, and also here they have q and a unlike in can they don't have q and a after that yeah, and i actually quite like q and a's because then yeah, you can interact right. with the audience and hear what they have to say and you know answer yeah, their questions absolutely Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have a pleasant stay in Sydney, and uh, let me say welcome to Australia, sir. And uh, uh, I, we feel honoured to talk to you, Nandita. Thanks very much for Thank taking so time much. to. I'm here with my son, so I'm also staying back a few days to oh. be able to see the city, and there, yes. you know, there's so many lovely of things course. to see here. So I'm yeah. looking forward. Even Sydney is actually finishing today. I saw that last night. We oh, went. It was very oh, okay. windy yeah, outside, it but it was beautiful. The way the city was lit. Yes. It's and an on the opera event. house yeah it was very yeah, nice of course the two mega events uh, sydney film festival and vivid sydney mm -hmm. coming together at the same time is uh, yeah uh, it's quite uh, a treat i treat think treat for the sydney siders as well yeah. <laughs> have a pleasant thank stay you. and thank thanks you very for talking much. to us indian thank you thanks a lot thanks thank you much.